During the weekly manga run of the Fullbring arc, I always wondered who would be given the honour of eventually bringing an end to the secondary main villain of that arc, Skishima Shukuro. Obviously, Skishima had been well known at that point for bringing untold and unprecedented amounts of pain and suffering to Ichigo, driving Ichigo to the point where he actually wanted to kill someone. Um, so I always wondered who would eventually stop Skishima's reign of terror. And I have to be honest that Byakia never actually crossed my mind. I never anticipated that he would be the one to fight Skishima at the end. And I think that's because I always saw Skishima as Ichigo's enemy. You know, he was Ichigo's villain, he was more of a personal villain in that regard. And yet, in retrospect, looking back now, it makes absolute perfect sense for the one to kill him to be Byakuya Kuchiki, someone who Ichigo has personally changed on a real emotional level throughout their time together in this story. Nowhere better are the bonds of friendship that Ichigo has been able to forge with the Soul Society more apparent than they are in Byakuya. And so a fight that is all about bonds, that has bonds on the line, you know, that's where the stakes are found in this battle, it makes so much sense for Byakuya to be the one to eventually stop this guy. So today, in our first Bleach Battle analysis of 2021, we're going to be looking at Byakuya versus Skishima. My favourite fight from the Lost Agent arc, no questions asked, and actually one of my favourite battles in the entire series. Before we begin, however, guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to hit that button now. You're in the perfect place for Bleach content like this every single week. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well, because it does help with the whole algorithm on YouTube. And also don't forget to hit the notification bell, just so you stay up to date with all of my videos. So yeah, I'll admit, in hindsight, the uh, poll for this one was a little bit skewed, I think. I kind of underestimated foolishly Byakuya's popularity, and I thought that using a lost agent fight of Byakuya's would maybe level it out with some lesser known fights, but no, Byakuya versus Kashima is still absolutely destroyed in the poll. But I'm not complaining about that, because, you know, there's no denying I really did want to talk about this fight. So hopefully the next poll will be a little bit more even, but this one... I do love this fight, and I, I did really want to talk about it quite a lot. Um, I do think these two opponents are perfectly suited for each other. And the Lost Agent arc, Kubo was still employing his method of mirror matching. Characters would face each other who were fairly similar. Obviously not in always similar, you know, Giriko is not really like Kenpachi in that sense. It's more used as uh, Kenpachi's able to make an example out of someone who is way in over their head. Um, but at least... Some, in, there are some aspects of characters that are similar. Hitsugaya and Yukio kind of look the same. Uh, I feel like Renji and Jackie are more physical fighters who also have this kind of honor code to each of their characters. Rukia and Riruka both love cute things. Uh, Ikaku and Moe are both the sort of strong, uh, almost like uh, physical fighters. You know, they're kind of strong headed. Um, and then Ichigo and Ginjo are the substitute Shinigami. And then, of course, you have Byakuya and Skishima, and these two characters are similar on a surface level. They're both quite soft-spoken individuals with a bit of a dark nature to them. They do look quite similar as well in some aspects, but primarily the main thing bonding these two characters is that they have been major adversaries of Ichigo at one point or another. And that is entirely what's on the line in this battle, and it's a subtext that I never anticipated until the fight actually happened, and I think the way Kubo plays it is fantastic. Uh, and again, it's just not something I ever expected, which I think makes it really stand out as far as the Lost Agent arc battles go. So this fight begins from chapter 464, once everyone splits off into the chat rooms that Yukio creates, and it eventually ends in 473. But the fight is absolutely not that long. It is very chopped up. Um, but it does still remain, regardless of that, pretty much the second longest fight in this arc, clocking in at around three chapters worth of material with all the pages combined. Now, after all the pain and misery Skishima puts Ichigo through, Ichigo eventually pairs off to fight Ginjo, because Ginjo turns out to be the main villain of the arc. And I think back in the day, a lot of people reading this weekly kind of wanted Ichigo to have the last word when it came to dealing with Skishima, but Kubo really was thinking a couple of steps ahead here, I think, and pairing him off against Byakuya ended up making a ton of sense. Looking at the fight from its very beginnings, and there are already a couple of things different about this battle compared to the rest of the fights happening concurrently at the end of the Lost Agent arc. 
For instance, a lot of those fights feel like they're kind of being played up as almost light-hearted or a bit jokey. It's very clear that the Fullbringers are out of their depth against the centuries-old Shinigami, whether that's Kenpachi one-shotting Giriko or, you know, characters like Ikaku lecturing Moe on their kind of place in the world. But the Byakuya vs. Tsukushima fight is dealt with differently from the off. There's a very sinister nature in the air, something... Not quite right is, 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 in this, is in the sky, especially in the anime. They give it a, like a blood red moon to really help kind of hammer home that actually this fight might be a little more dangerous than the others that are going on currently. And that's obviously reinforced by Kenpachi wanting to take on Tsukushima um, just as the chat rooms close because he thinks that he is the strongest one there. And Kenpachi is generally speaking a pretty good judge of character and strength just by looking at someone. So you know immediately that Tsukushima is probably not going to go down quite so easily. Now, Byakuya, after his fight with Ichigo, actually gets handed quite a lot of these more sinister, witchy opponents. You know, he gets Zomari, and that fight is actually really well done, especially in the anime. I love their choice of soundtrack before Zomari releases. It does give it this air of, like, unease. You know, there's something creepy going on in this battle, something eerie. And then, of course, later on, after the Tsukushima fight, Byakuya fights as not. And although the circumstances are very different, you know, the whole of Soul Society is under attack, it's not exactly going to be slow-paced, as himself is, of course, a creepy opponent. And very much the same thing happens here. Tsukushima is the creepy fullbringer. It's all very eerie, it's all very almost a bit spooky what's going on here. And I kind of like that Byakuya is often used for those kind of fights because his personality deals well with that. He's not someone to joke around. You very rarely in the manga get full-on, light-hearted, comedic scenes with Byakuya, so generally his fights are handed with a bit more gravitas. But they get separated into their different chat rooms, and immediately Tsukushima kind of confronts Byakuya, saying, like, you shouldn't really be looking at the moon, you don't have the time for that. But Byakuya responds to him basically by saying, I'm the right person to fight you. Although you've made Ichigo Kurosaki incredibly angry, I don't believe he has it in him to wield his sword in a way that would actually kill you. And Kenpachi is even worse to fight Tsukushima because of the way he's so bloodthirsty, he would just rush right in and Tsukushima would take him down with a very quick hit and that would be his Book of the End ability activating immediately. Tsukushima kind of deduces that the way Byakuya is talking makes him think that he's not going to hit him at all because as we know, Book of the End, the moment he strikes someone with it, he's able to insert himself into their past and in many cases, that's it, it's over. Whereas Byakuya pretty much says that's exactly right, and as Tsukushima goes to try and strike him, he summons his pe blade petals and blocks the attack. Now, I remember when I was reading this, and uh, Tsukushima was going up against Byakuya, and he did successfully block him with Senbon Zakura right at the beginning of the fight, I was kind of thinking to myself, if Tsukushima hits Byakuya, it is over. Like, is he going to make Byakuya think he's his friend, and then we're just going to kind of get Chan Norahime again? Or is Kubo just going to make it somehow that Tsukushima doesn't actually hit Byakuya, in which case we're not going to have the most interesting battle on our hands? Kubo interestingly finds a middle ground compromise for that problem, though. I think he himself thought he had maybe had an issue on his hands where he didn't want the fight to just be one and done. You know, Tsukushima has to hit Byakuya at some point or else it's going to be there's going to be no tension whatsoever. But Byakuya can't be defeated the moment he gets hit. So there has to be a middle ground, and Kubo does a really good job with that, but we'll get there when things start heating up. Basically, Tsukushima tries to hit Byakuya, Byakuya deflects it and says that I hate the way you fight, I think tearing apart the bonds of friendship so that they can do the fighting for you is the height of cowardice. Um, and I am not only going to kill you, I'm going to kill you and then just toss your body aside. Obviously, Byakuya being very prideful is really looking down on Tsukushima here um, and talking some serious smack to him. After seeing Tsukushima walk all over Ichigo for many chapters, this was quite a satisfying way to open this battle. But the fight is not revisited until most of the other uh, Fullbringers have been defeated. Ikaku and Moe's fight has basically just ended, um, and we go back to the battle arena with Byakuya and Tsukushima, and they haven't actually really moved yet. It turns out that Tsukushima's actually playing it very, very coy. He's being incredibly cautious about what to do next. Um, he knows, of course, the powers of Senbon Zakura. He knows that if he gets near Byakuya, he'll step within his range. Um, now, Tsukushima hasn't actually hit Byakuya yet, so he doesn't have all the insider knowledge he'll get later on, but he at the very least theorises that if he walks 
any closer, Byakuya might hit him. And I like the way Tsukishima tries to almost feel Byakuya out at the beginning of this fight. And Tsukishima tries to unnerve Byakuya by showing off his ability, essentially. So this leaf falls next to him and he cuts it in half and he's like, did that attack seem like it had any meaning to you? And then he strikes the ground and he's like, what about that one? And Byakuya's like, I don't think I should see these as meaningless acts. At which point Tsukishima takes a step towards him. One thing I love about the beginning of this fight is how drawn out everything feels, and the manga in particular does an excellent job of amplifying that creep factor by just making Skishima look really, really eerie the whole time you see him. His step forward that he takes into Byakuya's range is exaggerated, but it looks really, really cool. Um, and you see Byakuya is just prepared for the, anything this guy has. Um, and the moment Skishima takes that step, Byakuya activates Senbon Zakura. We then cut away again from that fight, but we return a little bit later, and it looks like Tsukishima is having absolutely no luck whatsoever. He's down on one knee, he's been injured a couple of times, and it looks like Byakuya kind of has the upper hand. However, Byakuya takes a step forward suddenly to find himself caught in a trap. He presses a switch on the ground, and this basically this rock rises up and then tries to crash down upon him. And Tsukishima basically reveals that he set a trap there when he came to this place a long time ago, and Byakuya's like, you've been here before. And it's at this point we find out the true extent of Book of the End's powers. Um, by cutting the ground earlier, Tsukishima was able to insert himself into the arena's past and add a bunch of traps. And that is not only incredibly devilish, it's ridiculously overpowered as well, that he can use it on inanimate objects. The way Tsukishima kind of gets around this always makes me laugh. Byakuya says, um, oh, so your ability can work on inanimate objects as well, and Tsukishima's response is literally just, I don't remember ever saying it couldn't. And he's like, yeah, he's right, he never, I don't think he ever said it couldn't, so fair enough. Um, and I, I just really like that, and he he has Byakuya now on the back foot, uh, which, which I really like, because this fight ramps up quite fast. So Skishima basically appears immediately behind Byakuya. Byakuya tries to come round and hit him, but Skishima grabs his arm and he basically says, your sword and your techniques, you know, I've seen them all so many times, they're just downright boring to me. At which point he slices Byakuya across the chest. Now this was a pretty big deal moment uh, when I saw this the first time, when I read it the first time, I was like, oh man, I, where is Kubo going to take this fight? Because we know what Tsukishima's Book of the End does. It's been the principal driving factor of the entire Fullbring arc so far. So is Byakuya now essentially going to fall under Tsukishima's spell? And it doesn't seem to quite work like that because Kubo takes a different route to make the fight a bit more interesting, which, like I said a minute ago, I do actually appreciate. So Tsukishima strikes Byakuya, really nice colour page here as well in the manga where he just cuts Byakuya across the front and there's a really cool looking dynamic shot of the two of them. Uh, and Tsukishima basically says a moment's hesitation has sealed your fate. You know, I've, I've managed to strike you once, so now it is over. Um, and he basically starts talking to Byaki about this thing called the No Damage Zone, or as it was originally penned in the manga, the Hurtless Area, which is a weird word that doesn't really mean anything, but, you know, it works, it means you can't get hurt there. But it's essentially integral to how Sinbon Zakura works, and it means that you have this... Byakuya has this ring around himself where Sinbon Zakura can never come in. Uh, and that's what protects him from the razor blades, and it's what Tsukishima is exploiting now to damage Byakuya. So he got close enough to Byakuya, where he grabbed his arm and he hit him. Byakuya really couldn't do anything about it because of this whole no damage zone. And is like, where did you hear the term no damage zone before? And Tsukishima says, from you. So basically what's happened here is, rather than insert himself as like a best friend... Tsukishima has inserted himself as Byakuya's mentor, his lifelong mentor who taught him everything he knows. It's actually very, very clever, because it does mean that Tsukishima is in the perfect position to defeat Byakuya now. Not only does he know every move of Byakuya's, you know, Gokei, Senkei, uh, Shukei, Hakuteken, all of that sort of thing, uh, he's not only in the perfect position to deal with all of those abilities, but also... Perhaps the single most broken part of Book of the End is that Tsukishima's own power and strength has risen to a proportionate level where he could realistically have been Byakuya's mentor. 
But either way, before we get to that point, basically, Tsukishima says, none of your Bankai abilities are going to work on me. And uh, he then steps in and the fight continues. And we cut away once again. So you see what I mean is quite chopped up, but it is still longer than basically every other fight at the end of this arc. When the fight returns in 472 Razor Edge Requiem, which is a really cool name for a chapter, this is the full fight now. This is the meat of this battle. Um, and it starts pretty much with the two of them clashing and they go in for an attack. Tsukushima dodges, they clash and Byakuya's sword breaks in half. His arm toe spirals away and lands in the floor. There are some really great dynamic shots in this fight, in the manga specifically. Um, the fight is just drawn really, really well. Um, and I, I love how the battle looks. And Tsukushima says, oh, your sword broke. And Byaki is like, I can't believe the two years of training I have had between obviously the Eisen arc and now would turn out to be completely useless in this fight. And Tsukushima says, they're not useless. It's just I've grown by the exact same amount. This is what I meant earlier when Tsukushima's own power can elevate him to a level that would make the lie that he creates believable. He claims, thanks to the past that he has created, to be Byakuya's mentor. Well, human Tsukushima would never be that powerful, but this new Tsukushima would be, uh, which is ridiculously good. Uh, but it's pretty cool, and I like how much depth it turned out Book of the End actually had. It's still one of my favourite abilities in the series. One of the abilities I think is probably one of the best fleshed out, you know, because and that makes sense because, like I said before, it's a driving force of this entire arc. But I love how Book of the End works. I love the way it's explained here. And Tsukishima's just a great character overall. And one of the cool things about the Lost Agent arc in particular, the art style in this arc is very... It's quite minimalist. You know, there's a lot of close-up character faces. There's a lot of singular characters in panels. Uh, and it works wonders in these fight scenes. You get really great troll faces from Skishima as his evil plan is kind of unfolding against Byakuya. Really great looks from him as he just looks kind of just super menacing and unhinged. Um, and of course, really badass shots of Byakuya as well. But Byakuya kind of decides enough is enough with this uh, charade and he drops the first half of his sword into the ground and then drops his hilt and says Bankai. That's pretty cool. I love that he actually had to drop the first half. I wonder if he did have to do that, if he had to drop the entire sword. I would assume so, otherwise he wouldn't have done it. Uh, but he basically then sends all of his blades towards Skishima. And he's like, Skishima's like, I told you, I've seen this a million times before. I can deal with this easy. And Skishima immediately goes for the no damage zone. He appears right behind Byakuya, tries to hit him. Uh, but Byakuya is already thinking on his feet and changing the way he's been fighting for centuries. And, you know, I think this fight, and it's this fight is so interesting to me for this reason. Byakuya is not necessarily fighting like this world-ending, extremely powerful Espada or this crazy Sternritter. He's just fighting a human with an admittedly broken ability, but maybe more so than ever, this fight forces Byakuya to reevaluate who he is and how he fights. Um, so Skishima is in the no damage zone, he goes in for a hit, but Byakuya brings the Senbon Zakura petals towards him into the no damage zone to block the hit. And Skishima is obviously massively shocked by this, and he's like, you, you never taught you that. So Byakuya is having to learn on the fly a new way of fighting that his mentor has never seen before. And that's basically a more reckless way of battle. Bringing Senbon Zakura's petals into the no damage zone to protect himself from Skishima's strikes. Skishima basically hotfoots it over to a uh, pillar and he's like, you know, I never taught you that before. And Byakuya says, if you never taught me it, you don't know how to stop it. And Skishima's basically like, oh, I see, you're just desperate. You know, you're just resorting to these desperate tactics. Kubo does this great thing in the manga, which I think I've mentioned before, where he basically, like, put a tone over Skishima's face and then made his pupils pure white, giving him this demonic look. He does it a couple of times throughout the arc. Um, you know, where it's almost like Skishima's at his craziest, essentially, and he gives him one here. And he's basically like, you know, that'll never stop me. And they basically get into this very, very short skirmish where Skishima's using Bring a Light to almost like dance around Byakuya. Byakuya's having to move Senbon Zakura Kagiyoshi in and out. Uh, and pretty much Skishima's plan is that he says to Byakuya, the closer you, you bring Senbon Zakura into yourself, the faster it all speeds up and the closer it becomes to suicide. And what I, what I really like about this fight, that I think personally the manga captures so much better than the anime, is that feeling of desperation, uh, that feeling where Byakuya is 
in the middle of this razor wind, just this whirlwind of razors that could cut him up at any moment. And Tsukishima is like ready to throw him off. And in my opinion, the anime does so many things so well. You know, obviously it does, you know. But I would always recommend this fight in the manga over the anime because I think the anime gets the pacing a little bit wrong with this battle. Uh, in, in, that's only my opinion, of course. It's just from having read this fight a lot of times in the manga. But I envision it as truly Byakuya is like encased in this tornado of razor petals that is inches from hitting him. And he reaches out to move them towards Kishima. Kishima knocks him off balance for a split second. And that causes the petals just to rush down like a waterfall, like a torrent of water, and shred Byakuya's outstretched arm. But I was really disappointed watching it in the anime when Byakuya sort of moves, and his moves are really sluggish, it looks like. Tsukushima knocks his arm. The petals kind of come down really slowly. I don't know if they just depicted it like that so that it was a little bit more obvious what was happening, but the manga conveyed that sense of desperation better, in my opinion. Obviously, you can't beat the soundtrack and stuff like that. That really adds a lot to the fight. But I think pacing-wise, the actual pacing of the battle, I think, was better done in the manga. Regardless, Byakuya's entire arm is just shredded by his own Bankai. That would come and bite him again not, not far from here, actually. He'd get a lot worse than that. Uh, in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, but here he gets the first taste of that where his arm is just ripped apart and Tsukishima's like, you know, you literally can't beat me. And he kind of walks up to Byakuya, his arms wide open, he's like, you know, there's nothing you can do. And he says, you know, you can't use any Bankai techniques, you can't use your Shikai, I know your Zanpakuto in and out. And Byakuya kind of slowly raises his shredded arm, his fist closed tightly towards Tsukishima. And Tsukishima being incredibly arrogant, you know, maybe rightfully so in this situation, but he pretty much presses his chest up against Byakuya's fist. And he's like, are you going to use a Kido? Well, go ahead and I'll show you that I know the ever, I know how to defeat all of these Kido. And before we move on to the very end, I w a part of me would have loved to have seen Byakuya use Shukei Hakutekin just to see how Tsukishima would have actually countered it, because I don't really know how he would have managed that. Same with the Kido. Like, I don't understand why just cutting Byakuya instantly gives Kashima the entire notebook on how to defeat every single Kido ever made. But regardless, Kashima walks up to Byakuya and he's like, you know, it's over. And then suddenly you turn the page and there's just this torrent of blades blasting through Kashima's back. And it's a great, it's a great way of finishing the fight. And again, I think it's better in the manga because you get that shock factor of turning the page and he's just like that, just... Senbon Zakura going through his spine uh, and he is like horrified he's like completely shocked and he like clutches his chest and he's like what happened you know I don't understand what happened and it turns out that Byakuya during the confusion when he got his arm shredded he grabbed a bunch of his own blades in his fist and then he just punched them through Tsukishima Again, completely unlike anything we've ever seen Byakuya do. He's thinking on his feet in a, to try and defeat this guy with something he has never seen before. And I think it works fantastically well. I think it's one of the best endings to a Bleach fight ever. I think it's so shocking, but so in character. It makes so much sense for Byakuya to have to search inside himself for a way of fighting that he's never done before. Um... And this kind of brutish grabbing the petals with his own hands, punching them through Tsukishima, is very cathartic. Tsukishima's been a thorn in the hero's and the reader's side for ages by this point. And it's really good. You know Kubo had so much fun drawing Byakuya, just trashing Tsukishima like that. Uh, it just, it works really well. You know, don't think about the logistics of it because there's no way Byakuya has that many petals in his hand. <laughs> because when you see Tsukishima, it's like a massive beam going through him, but it's still really, really cool. And, uh, you know, Tsukishima's kind of like, I, I, I'm surprised you did that. You know, you, you did something I wasn't expecting. And he collapses to the floor. And Byakuya's like, you know, for the first time ever, I felt sort of the, the thrill of battle. So I, I thank you for that. And then we get a very small little epilogue to the fight where Tsukishima's lying, just dying on the floor. And he basically says, you know, after everything I've taught you, I can't believe you're still, you're just going to leave me like this. And he's trying one last time to use Book of the End to get Byakuya to take pity on him. 
And it's cool because up until this point, we've never seen Book of the End used in this way. Purely defensive, Skishima's trying to save his own ass, essentially, by lying on the floor and being like, I need you to help me out here. You know, I've done so much for you. And Byakia turns to him and he's like, it's true, you know, I wouldn't be where I am without your help today, but you are an enemy of Ichigo Kurosaki, and for that reason, I have to kill you. And Tsukushima's like, damn it. You know, he, he didn't think of that. And I, and I think that that is so good, because the entire message of the fight is summed up in that final shot, where it turns out that Byakia now values over almost everything else Ichigo. You know, his friendship with Ichigo, the guy who changed his heart and changed his mind and perspective back in the Soul Society arc. And tr I want to do a video on Byakia's character development because I think it's some of the best in the entire series. But, you know, the Cliff Notes version, Byakia starts out as this guy who is immensely conflicted by the law and by his love for his family. And then Ichigo comes in, this lawless urchin, essentially, who's determined to upturn the centuries-old laws and values of the Soul Society, which are immensely out of date uh, and rigid. And then, obviously, he changes Byakia's mind. Byakia learns to put family first. In the Awakamundo arc, Byakia, again, is kind of putting on this front that he doesn't really care, but he lets Rukia and Renji go and help Ichigo, despite despite strict orders from the, up, uh, from the upper class not to. Um, and then, obviously, Byakia arrives on the Awakamundo battlefield himself, entrusts saving Karakura to Ichigo. Uh, there's all, there's that lovely little moment between Mayuri and Byakia where Mayuri's like, from your words, you think he's going to win. And it's a really nice moment. And then obviously now in the Lost Agent arc, Byakia values that bond with Ichigo. And that's why, in hindsight, it makes so much sense for these two to fight. Despite kind of feeling like Ichigo maybe should have been the one to take Skishima on, it works so well that Byakia is the one who is representative of of those bonds. You know, Ichigo has lost most of his major bonds at this point, but the Shinigami return, Rukia restores his powers, but it's Byakia who defeats his tormentor. And I, I, it, it works incredibly well. It works incredibly well, because not only does it reinforce this idea of bonds, one of the main themes of that arc, and Tsukushima is the one who is tearing them apart, and it's symbolic that Byakia is the one who kills him. Not only is that very poignant, but also it shows you how far Byakia has come. Uh, and that's why I love this fight. I think it's really, really well done. It has basically everything I like in a Bleach fight. Uh, it's not massively bombastic, but I think it picks up nicely towards the end, which is why I prefer the manga, because I think it is more faster paced. You get this idea of desperation when the when the panel of Byakia's face, when Tsukushima's like, it's suicide, and Byakia looks really worried. I think it's done really, really well. And I just think that the Lost Agent arc, a lot of people don't really like it, as I've said before, I think that's, I don't agree, but I think this fight is truly excellent, um, definitely my favourite from the arc, and one of my favourite in the series, and yeah, that's basically everything I have to say on it, I, I, it is one of my favourites, and I, I would recommend the manga, and then go and watch the anime, uh, but either way, this fight, I love both the characters involved, I like that sense of the sinisterness, the eeriness going on, I'm a big fan of that kind of tone, um, and I think it's handled really, really well. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoy Byakia vs. Kishima. Is it one of your favourite fights in the series like it is mine? If so, why do you like it? And if you don't like it, let me know why in the comments below as well. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video and give it a thumbs up. But until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. See you then.